So hello everyone, welcome to this Hyperledger Sweden uh, meetup. My name is uh, Roland and I am your guest for today's session. And I think today we have a really cool session uh, because we will work on this uh, session from the last time. And uh, today we will use uh, CouchDB where we will see how we can use CouchDB for our commission statement example. And uh, at the beginning, I would like to give you a short overview of what we are doing today. And I will represent the uh, use case again, so that you will understand what's going on in this example. And then we will make a short introduction. What is a state database? So that we uh, know what we mean with this term. And it's always good to know also from the perspective of a fabric developer, of a an, um, an Node.js developer, maybe because uh, we focus at the moment on Node.js, on chain cron development for Node.js. Node and uh, this comes a little bit from the client side. So we can use uh, Node.js, uh, of course, for the client side development. And when we look a little bit on the server side, so this both things uh, should work hand in hand. So from the client side, we can only call some methods or functions uh, which are implemented in the chain code. And uh, in Fabric, it's uh, so that we have a so-called state database. And by default, and in all sessions uh, until this session today, we have always used level DP. And that's one, that's the default way of storing a state uh, state of an asset. But Fabric offers also a second way, and that is with CouchDB. That's a NoSQL database. And uh, this gives us uh, some other com uh, some other features and uh, more more flexibility if it comes to searching and aggregation functions and something like that, what a um, NoSQL database can do for us. So a short introduction at the beginning. And then uh, we will see uh, how we can enable CouchDB in our demo setup. So um, as long as we are working on the development, so we work on our Docker DevNet um, example so that we can uh, implement some chain code functions and we can start and restart the chain code and um, without uh, every time to upgrade the chain code. So that's the reason why we use also today um, the Docker chain code example which we have which we have seen in the last uh, previous sessions. And then we will add um, an a new function to this example and with this and this is a uh, method where we can query our transactions uh, with the date range but we will see it a little bit later here on the, in this reference section you will find the agenda and also the previous agendas and also upcoming agendas here and here is also the link to the support material this is the same link which i have posted uh, to the chat here and uh, on this github repo you find also all other support materials from the previous sessions so and also the materials which maybe you need for today's session so when you have missed uh, some sessions before then it's helpful to look into this support material yeah and then we have here some uh, links of course, to the Hyperledger documentation and then to the favorite chain code node um, GitHub repo. There you will find also some useful information. And then, of course, CouchDB. So, since today we start with CouchDB, or we see a little bit from CouchDB, then it makes sense to look also into the documentation of CouchDB. So, okay. So this is an overview of the last session. So for our demo development, we have created a specific use case. Uh, and in this use case, we have, we have two organization, a producer organization and the seller organization. And uh, uh, the producer 
pays the seller for recommendations 1% of the revenue and 10% of the closed sale. And uh, we have uh, done in the last session the implementation uh, of this chain code in Node.js. And uh, we have seen that how large this container image would be uh, if you try to use this chain code in the test network. And also we have seen how many transactions per seconds we can reach with a simple single uh, virtual machine on digital uh, ocean. And um, in the last week I have implemented the same, uh, the same chain code also in Golang, but we will come to this a little bit later when we uh, compare Hello. these two things. Hello. Do you have a question? No, okay. And uh, yeah, and then here we have an asset. So this is our asset configuration. So we store the revenue, the commission and uh, the date of this revenue. So uh, today we would like to introduce a new method and with this method uh, get commission statement by time range. So, and uh, with this uh, method, we would like to use two um, parameters with the starting date and the end date. And uh, we want to see uh, how many transactions, how many assets we have in this time range. And that's the implementation of for today's session. And uh, in the last session, we have seen that um, when we use couch, when we use level to be, then we have a very simple scenario. So we have a key and the value to store in the blockchain. And the key is only a, is always a string. So it's a string, it's a, num it's a number, it's a unique ID or whatever, but it's always a string and it's always unique. So one single transaction has only one unique key. And um, to query this, it could be a little bit uh, difficult uh, when it comes to when, when you want to know how many transactions you have done uh, in the last year or in this year or in this month or in a particular month and something like that. And that's the reason why we have also seen how we can use a so-called composite key uh, to query or to fit this requirement. And we have implemented a composite key with this uh, structure, with the year, with the month, and the transaction ID. And uh, today we would like, but with this, with this uh, key, we cannot query um, a time range uh, from start day, uh, from the start day date to an end date. And uh, that's the reason why we have to switch to another, to another state database. And for this, we can use this CouchDB. And with CouchDB, we can use um, some uh, find, uh, this find command with a selector. And with the selector, we can use uh, um, integrated functions like greater than or, log or, or less than. And with that, we can formalize and query uh, to make this function uh, working. And that's what we are going to implement today. So we, we, we use the same Node.js code from the last time, but we will implement uh, a new function here. And uh, to do this and to use this, we also have to see how we can implement um, CouchDB in a fabric network. But um, here is first another slide. So it's this slide summarizes a little bit uh, what we have done uh, in the last session, so to give you a better overview. So here is our data model. So as we have seen uh, in the last session, and then we have used this standard level DB database. And uh, with this technique of composite key, we have created a function, get a commission statement by year, month. And when we have uh, used this function, then we have to we have the possibility that we can say okay I want to see all 
revenues from the from a year from a month are exactly one particular transaction so and and in this in this way so and uh, with couchdb now uh, we have the possibility to use all these composite key queries as well uh, and we can extend this also with a new function and then we can make a query with this with, a, with the find function and the spe special selector uh, that we can query date to date. So we can say, okay, this is my date string, uh, my start date string, and this is my end date string. And uh, we want all transactions, all revenues, or all commissions here uh, between this date. And this is one example how you can uh, use. Uh, CouchDB for an example like that. Okay, so um, here's the slide. So um, what is a state database? So when you start with Fabric, then you have to know some little basics. And one basic is that um, everything what is stored in Fabric is an asset. So an asset is something like, can, could be everything, could be this transaction of the revenue, could be a house, could be a car, could be a non-fungible token, whatever. So, and um, could also be only a string, for example. Yeah, could a string or could be a data object. And uh, in this data object, you can store other data objects and so on. So I think every JSON structure you can uh, compose, you can store also in the value of the block, of as well, in the value of this um, asset. And uh, the state database is by default level DP, as I have mentioned. And um, the state database holds also uh, the last, the last uh, version, the last status of an asset. So, um, and that's a really a cool feature which you uh, in, in blockchain, because uh, when we query the last state of uh, any key, then we, are, we don't have to query the whole blockchain and the blockchain could be huge. So we only have to query the world state and the world state is uh, a key value store in LevelDB or in CouchDB. And uh, all other histories, for example, the other states of an asset will be stored in the blockchain. And uh, this is then called the so-called ledger. So, and the world state here is a database which holds all the assets in your, uh, on your channel and uh, always the last status of this channel. And that's make, uh, Fabrica also very fast to find and to query and to uh, interact with this uh, blockchain system. So the ledger current state data represents the latest value of all keys ever included in the chain transaction log. So, but the important sentence here is the current state and uh, the latest value here of an asset. Um, it's the world state. So, and this um, term you can find only in Fabric, I think, and uh, the developers of Fabric called this a so-called world state. And uh, yeah, how you can enable this now? So that's, I think, um, pretty simple. So the only thing what we have to do is we have to include the new uh, Docker service. So, and uh, Fabric comes with an image, and uh, this image is uh, Fabric CouchDB here, Hyperledger Fabric CouchDB. And we have to define in the Docker Compose file here a new service. And uh, there are some, some, some points uh, to notice. Uh, here, the environment. So, this is important that we set a uh, CouchDB user and then CouchDB password. And um, yeah, and a CouchDB service and the Couch container name. And then we have here to formulate, this is the standard part. So this is the standard part for one CouchDB uh, service. And we have to make sure that we are in the right or in the same uh, network here. And then 
we have to, to link the, this CouchDB container to the corresponding peer container. So when we have peer zero here, then we, and we use CouchDB for this peer, then we have to uh, use and separate CouchDB service here. So you can say every peer uses its, its own CouchDB service. Yeah. And you have to know that you cannot split it. So when the peer uses CouchDB, then the peer cannot, ooh, sorry. And uh, when a peer uses CouchDB, then the peer cannot use at the same time a level DB. So, but you can have in your network um, on a peer CouchDB and also another peer, you can have level DB. But uh, when you use uh, the example like like today, then of course you cannot you can only use the CouchDB queries on a, on a peer where you have also CouchDB running. So and uh, to connect this this both together, so uh, Fabric has here two environment variables, um, namely core ledger state state database must be set to CouchDB here. And then this uh, CouchDB config, CouchDB address um, environment variable here must, must point to the service name, CouchDB zero and the corresponding part here. So, and that's the, that's the name here, the service name and the part here. Yeah. And when you have a peer uh, one, two, three and so on, then you have also, oops, then you have also to increase uh, the part number and we have to uh, change it also here. And then uh, you can, when you set here and, and CouchDB user and the password, uh, then you have also give here the CouchDB user and password name. And yeah, and that's it. So, and uh, with, two, with these two pieces, you can um, use a CouchDB as a state database for a particular peer in your Docker composition. And yeah, that's, I think that's all what you have to know. And maybe um, it's important uh, to know that when you use this CouchDB, there's also an um, user interface um, and this user interface populates uh, uh, or the exposes on this pub, this part to, to the public. And um, then you can uh, use a browser, Chrome, for example, and to browse to the peer address and to the spot. And then you have, you have an, an, an graphical user interface like uh, PHP my admin for MySQL is, so is this also uh, an user interface uh, for CouchDB. So and that's the reason why it's important to set here a uh, username and the password uh, for the root user, for the admin user. And uh, yeah. So that's what this. And then, uh, yeah, here is this. This is the Foxton interface. Yeah, it's a web UI interface. And Joe, the telephone is calling. <laughs> so. And um, yeah, so the steps to do is uh, we have first to enable, we have to first uh, make our network um, couch to be enabled for a state database. And then we can extend our chain code with this new uh, search method. And then we have to install and instantiate it. And in our case, we will do it with the Docker chain code uh, dev mode. And uh, yeah, and then we can try it uh, from the command line to query this uh, CLI. And this is a good reminder. So uh, in the last, so last week I received a request from, um, from, from a user and this user asked me a question uh, regarding this Docker dev network. And he want to know um, how he can, in our examples, we use only the CLI to interact with this test network with this uh, development mode network. And he wanted to know how he can do this with uh, Node.js. So, and uh, in the next session, I think this is a good uh, idea and a good 
learning to see how we can use also a Node.js client um, for, for this uh, Docker dev mode. And then you can, I think, maybe a little bit easier uh, test your chain code. Okay, so, and here you see the, 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 the web UI as an administrator tool, for example, and here you have to replace the local host with your uh, IP address or uh, with your public IP address and so on. So, and here you see the port, no? So. Okay, so, yeah, and then, um, one thing what we can do also with this type of uh, queries is we can have an order, we can change the order. So we can make a simple sort, we can sort uh, um, in two directions. And, but for this, we need an index. So, and uh, when we create our chain code and we install this chain code, then we have provided in the chain code folder an index. And um, the index is nothing more than a JSON file. And uh, this here is the JSON file. So, so. And uh, here we can define the index fields. So what we want to index and to query is the revenue timestamp. And uh, we can do this and then we here define this field. And the fields, we can have multiple fields, fields which are going to be indexed. And then we have to uh, give them a name. So the index revenue time set name, it's the name of the index. And then here, this uh, type property is JSON. So there is only uh, this type for the moment. And uh, the ddoc, this ddoc uh, property is uh, optional. And uh, I don't know exactly for what's going on, but maybe when you change the index, I have read that if you change the index, then you have to use this one. But um, yeah, so that's the only uh, important part here is that you see the structure. So uh, you have to, on your chain code folder, in the root of your chain code folder, you have to create this folder structure with meta inf, state database, couch to be indexes, and here you have this put in this uh, JSON document and you can call it index revenue. And uh, this is the content of this index document. And uh, when we um, install this chain code, uh, this folder will also, uh, during the installation process, uh, the setup will see that there is an index and will install this index in the uh, chain code, in the couch to be. And then we can make, uh, then we have an index. And the good thing here is that uh, Favic um, keeps this, this index always warm. So this index will be updated after every transaction. So, and uh, we don't take, we don't have to take care is this index uh, um, actual or not. So this is part of the Favic life cycle. So uh, we will always have a warm index and then uh, we have a, a fast and performant system. So, but be careful with indexing. So if you have too much indexes, then it can uh, be too much. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so that was for the, that was for the introduction. And now, Let's see how this is working. Okay, so I will make this a little bit larger for you. So, and we need the, the terminal. Oops. In the last sessions, I also showed you the possibility to use a terminal multiplexer for this. But um, for me, it's here a little bit easier to demonstrate it. 
uh, because of the different uh, panels here. So, but when you make real development, then you should use this multiplexer because then you can leave the system alone and then and later you can come back and can uh, work again, work uh, further on your current position. So, um, okay. So the first thing what we have to do is uh, let us look into, yeah. So um, we need a new window here. to see what is our test network. To repeat a little bit the configuration of this. So, and we have placed this in the fave examples folder here. And here we have created, hopala, we have created a folder called dev network. And this is here our configuration. So, so if you are new to, to this, uh, then you can look at my GitHub repo and uh, there you will find a meetup how, we, how you can create this setup. And, but keep it short and simple. So this uh, Docker dev network, so we can do it in two ways. We can use the Docker, com a Docker composition, or we can follow the official guide in the 2.3 favorite doc documentation. And in this documentation, there is the binary version uh, descriptive. Uh, but both, uh, both, both variants uh, options do the same. So we have one order here for testing. And I've here mapped my uh, all files to this local folders here. So sample config, is the membership service provider. Um, artifacts is the folder where the genesis blocks live and the channel transaction and ledger data. This is the place where the blockchain uh, stores all the data for the orderer and also for the peer. And then here we have the folder, the folder for the uh, chain codes. Yeah. So, yeah. But this is the same as we have seen several times here. Then the peer here. Now let's let's look to the CouchDB container. So, and here we have our CouchDB service, and we have seen we have defined here uh, the CouchDB service for this peer null series. Uh, for this PNO, and then we have a couch to be user and the couch to be a password. These are the default canvas. So don't do this so in, uh, in a real scenario here. Use environment variables or something like that. Don't write your, your uh, credentials here in the Docker Compose file because the Docker Compose file could also part of a Git repo, for example, and uh, then you don't want the, your credentials in a Git repo. Um, so and then the port here, this is the standard port here, and then the network, dev network is the name of our network. And then we have to link this. So I have uh, marked this here. So the only thing what we have to do is we have to uh, put here in this these four environment variables. So which state database we use. So we use CouchDB and then the service name here. Yeah, in the port, that's couch to be zero, and then the port, and then use element password, and that's it. So that's that's the integration for this couch to be, and uh, with that we can start this Docker composition, and then we will have uh, three Docker services running: an order service, a peer service, and a state database in couch to be container for the beer 
zero. So, and that is, so that's the only, yeah, that's the important part here from the network side. And yeah, so, but first we have to, so don't forget housekeeping. So make sure that you have uh, cleared all your uh, system. So, and also you clear your Docker volumes. So uh, that's the reason why I have put this here always on the first position. So when you try a lot of uh, things, then uh, you will have uh, some um, trash containers and trash volumes and so on. And, and this could uh, lead to some problems. And yeah, so, and we need three terminals, one, two, three. The first terminal here uh, is the terminal where the Docker composition is running. So, and we uh, use the, the Docker system in the, we run it in the, in the foreground. So we don't have access to the terminal here to see all the log messages. In the second terminal here, this is the place where the chain code is started and stopped and so on so that we can modify our chain code. And here in the, in the third container, we will use, uh, we will test it with the CLI command. Okay. And to get started with this, so we need uh, this uh, config, uh, fabric config path. This is the sample config. So fabric uh, has to know where the configuration files are. And then we can, we have to do two steps. So we have, first we have to create the, um, the Genesis block, and then we need the, uh, the channel transaction for our channel with, ch with channel one, for example. So. so, okay, first step, and the second step. And then we will have in this artifact, artifacts folder, our Genesis block here, and here the channel transaction. And then we can start up the network. If Docker compose up. And you see a lot of log messages here. And we check and you see here CouchDB, so it seems CouchDB is running. Um, Couch and Docker PS shows us we have here now these few free services running. Um, the other, the beer, and the CouchDB zero for PS zero here. Yeah. Um, So we have some questions now. Um, it's culturally totally happy with um, No, of course you can you can have couch to be accessible about TLS, yeah, but not here in the uh, in this Docker Dev network. So uh, it's easier uh, to use it uh, without uh, SSL. There is no certificates. Uh, it's quite yeah. Yeah. So um, the history function. Um, when you look into the uh, favorite samples, then. Uh, you can find maybe maybe in the asset transfer uh, examples, there must be also an implementation how you can query the history from an asset. Okay, so 
Um, I have to be focused a little bit on the on the demonstration. So otherwise, I will make some mistakes and then we lose the red line. Okay, so now the first step is working. So here we have the Docker system now running. And then in the second terminal, also in our dev network, um, we need also the fabric sample folder. And then we have to create uh, the channel. These commands are always the same. So yeah, you can find these commands in the network script or you can find it also in the documentation. So, yeah. and now we are, we have joined the channel. And the next step is that we have to install our chain code. So, and for this step in the dev network, we need a little bit from the chain code that we can install it. So, and um, let's look to the um, second demo here in the chain code. So in the Node.js folder, here I have uh, prepared this. So this is copy and paste from the last session. So important here, um, the package JSON here is important. So important to have these two dependencies here included. So the fabric contract API and this is fabric skin. And um, yeah, and the main file must be here called the index.js file. Oh. And uh, very important here, the start command. And that's the reason that's, uh, that's re really important uh, that you uh, put in this start property here with this uh, value. And uh, this fabric chain code node um, is a program which comes with the fabric scheme. So that's the reason why we have to use the, we have to use this uh, NPM package fabric scheme. Uh, when you install this, then you will have also this uh, fabric chain code node. Uh, file and with this you can start at the, the chain code. So yeah, that's here the important part and uh, in the index file. So that's uh, here the same like you can see in the documentation. Yeah. And, um, and in this lib folder, here we have the state, have our chain code. And this is the same chain code which we have used uh, in the last session, I will give you a short re overview of that. So, so the anatomy of such a chain code is uh, simple. So you have here in the first term the, the contract. So and the and the contract is provided through this uh, required package here of the fabric contract API, and uh, then the contract. Um, has uh, to ex has to be extended to a, a class, and then we have a constructor, and uh, that's it. And then we have two special methods here, and this is before transaction and after transaction. And uh, in the before transaction, uh, this function is called like it like the name says before the transaction happened. So this is good for logging. Uh, if you need the uh, transaction ID for this particular request or something, whatever, for checking, for whatever you do. So, and uh, uh, this is also optional. So when you don't call this, then uh, it doesn't matter, but you can use it. And then this is called before the transaction happened. And the second is uh, after transaction here with the last one. And that's the same. So, yeah. and you can also, when this is called, then you can trigger an event or a log message or whatever you want. So, but this is done after the transaction is ready. And then we have implemented two functions in the last session this store uh, commission statement. And this is what we have seen in the slides. So we have two types here for revenues. We have 1% and 10%, 1% for an uh, recommendation and the 10% for a real uh, revenue here. So that's also, it's only an example. But 
in um, the next sessions, we will we say, okay, um, this is the chain code, but the smart contract is the contract between the producer and the seller. So, and these both companies uh, have decided to change these rules. And um, then they say, okay, uh, we I need more uh, revenue uh, percentage from you. And then we have to change this here. And then we have to uh, change this here. And then we have to see how we can upgrade the, this existing chain code in a running network with another uh, version of this chain code. So, and that's the reason why I, I have put here uh, so simple numbers. And then we can, in a later session, we can uh, see when the system is running and then the two parties say, okay, now we have to change this uh, business rules, then how we can change this um, in the chain code. So that's the reason why we have this here in place. And here's our model, was what we have seen. Here is how we have uh, created the composite key with the layout here, the amount and text and so on. So, yeah. And then we create here with this uh, boot state here, uh, a new asset or we update an existing asset. But in this scenario, we only create an asset. We never update the state of an asset here. And uh, important here is that we we can we have here um, a property. So this is the CTX, the context. And through this context um, parameter, we have access to this stub interface and the stub interface provide us different methods. And one of them is the boot state. And yeah, that's just the, the line uh, where the, the, the state is, is written and uh, the, 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 the value here, the key. Yeah. And the value is stored into the blockchain. And here you can see that this is the key. So this key could be a number, um, a string, whatever, or I am something like a composite key. There is another method which creates this composite key here, also provided with this from the stop interface here. And then here we have the value. And the value is nothing more uh, than a, a buffer, a pipe. Uh, uh, a tidy way, and uh, we can stringify this. Yeah, so we can. We have here JavaScript. Node.js is JavaScript, and then we can uh, modify this uh, with the JSON. So in in to string, and then we can create here a buffer uh, and buffer array, and this is then stored um, into the blockchain. And that's the and that's all here to store this transaction. And then we have this uh, function to, to read, to query. And uh, yeah, so and the main function here, the important part is this git state per partition uh, composite key. And uh, we have here the key, the layout of the key. And uh, the keys itself are in a way and uh, the, the array must be in this in this order. And then when we have only the year, then it creates only the year. When we have year and month, then it creates year and month. And when we have also the transaction ID, then we will have the particular uh, transaction. And uh, this is the variability which we have with, the, with our queries here. But when we want to try to query, um, this by day uh, or for two days or for three days, uh, then this will not work. So, and that's the reason why we uh, look for a better solution and the better solution here is uh, to use a CouchDB as a state database, yeah. And then here, this is the new function and this function we have to implement. So, okay, but now we have this function a little bit uh, in place and then we have to finish our setup. And uh, to finish our setup, first we have to install the chain code here. And the inst installation of the chain code is a two step process. So the first step is that we have to package the chain code. 
here with this peer life cycle chain code package uh, command. And uh, then we can install it with peer life cycle chain code install. Yeah. Keep this. And then we can query this. And uh, yeah, important is that we need this package ID. So every chain code package uh, has a package ID. And we need this uh, package ID for later for the uh, improvement process. Okay, so now let us check this. So um, we have to install it uh, to package. So now we have a new file here yeah, created at this moment. Yeah, this is in target GZ packet package and uh, it contains uh, the chain code, which we have uh, seen in pre -war. And then we can install it. With this command. And yeah, and if everything works right, then we should have here this um, chain code identifier. And uh, we need this number. So, and export this package ID in an environment variable uh, package ID here. So we need this package ID uh, here for the, for the start command. And we need it also here uh, when we approve the chain code. So, and uh, so it's a little bit easier to handle uh, this long number here. Okay, so, and then we can start the chain code. So we go to this chain code folder. And we are here now in this chain code folder. And then we can start here uh, with this command, the chain code. And the start command here is the same if you use a go for that. Yeah? The only difference here is that you have to uh, use this uh, fabric chain code start command here. So and then if everything works, then it should like this one. And now we have here the chain code running, but the chain code is not running in a container. We have manually started this chain code here. So yeah. in the real scenario, when we install it into the test network, for example, then you will have a, a chain code container running as a Docker container. Okay, so this looks fine. And in the third terminal, we need the fabric path. And then we need, of course, the, this environment variable again. Okay, and then we have the approve process. So, but we have to do this only once. So uh, the difference is uh, when, we, when, we, when we use this in a real scenario, we also have to do the same steps. But uh, the difference is that we cannot close this process here and start this process again uh, without upgrading the chain code. So when we modify the chain code, then we have to upgrade the chain code in a new version. And, uh, that uh, includes also a new approved process and uh, this is not so efficient for the development. So, and that's the reason uh, why we choose also this dev mode here. But for the first time, we have to, we have to approve this chain code per our uh, sample organization. And uh, the steps, but the steps are the same. So we have to uh, approve it by the organization and then we have to commit it by the organization. And uh, these are the both steps. We check the commit readiness. It's here not so important because we have only one organization. So when we have more than one organization, then 
uh, every admin of the other organization has to approve this chain code. And uh, maybe this is also uh, on another time. So, and then uh, we don't know when the, when the administrator of this peer has approved this chain code, but with this command, we can check it. So we can check the commit readiness uh, of a particular uh, chain code. Okay, so let's try this. And is valid, so transaction is valid. Okay, and when you check this readiness, you can do it. And you see here, we have only one sample organization and this value is true. So when we have more than one organizations, then we will see here at this time, at after the first time, sample organization one true and uh, the second organization false and so on. So. And then we can commit this chain code. And that's it. So now we have this chain code successfully installed, installed, approved and committed. And now, and this, this time we are ready to uh, test and develop our chain code. And um, okay, the chain code should run now. And the first is that we need some data into the chain code. So um, the first thing is that we set store some data. We can do this with this uh, with this CLI command, be a chain code invoke. So that's important a little bit. Uh, when you try to reproduce this example. So uh, please notice that uh, peer chain code invoke is used for the store, for storing, yeah? for changing, for, for creating, update uh, the, the ledger. And uh, peer chain code query is used only for query the data. So, and uh, that makes a, a huge difference because uh, the invoke process uh, goes over the orderer system and the beer chain code query uh, queries only the beer uh, which you are uh, connected uh, for the moment. So on the CLI, uh, you are connected to the environment variables and uh, from the Node.js client, uh, you are connected from the connection profile which you have used to connect to the fabric network. So, but notice here we have an invoke command for everything which changes the state and we have a query command, which only queries the state of an asset. And that's pretty cool, I think, because when we have uh, in our scenario, the seller could have a single node in his own data center, and um, he has only the right to query this data, and uh, he don't ha has to be access to our blockchain system. He only need a peer in his own data center, and then he can uh, create uh, these queries with a single, well, simple Node.js application, and then he can only query his revenue cells here uh, every time he wants to do it. Okay, so let's try if this is also working. Okay, looks like good. So, and here we have a key. And uh, this is true. So then let's create a little bit more data. Okay. And then let us try our query commands. And you see, we have here a result. So we have here a JSON string uh, with two results. So this works. So, and this is the, um, our state from the last session. So yeah, we can do this per year, we can do this per month. So um, this is two, two, so okay. So when we do this per month here, then we will receive only one line here. So uh, you see the difference. So, and when you create the full, the full key, then you will receive the particular uh, transaction here. 
Okay, so that is what we have done in the last session. And now we want to create another query in this one. So, yeah. And uh, for this one, we need here, so the first uh, in this command here, the command is an, an, um, an JSON array. And the first one is uh, called arc. And this, this, this arcs argument here uh, has an array. And the first element in this array is always the function. So, and this is the function uh, which will be called. And then the next parameter here, uh, the next elements in this array, these are the values. So, and here, so here we have one value. So this is the array zero, this is the element zero, this is the element one, and this is also the element zero, and this is the element one, and this is the element two here. Yeah? And we can give uh, as many uh, options here, values here as we want to the uh, function here. Okay, so, and how we, we can do this. So now we have to switch to our, no. Um, no, this is the wrong, uh, this one, so. Okay, so now let's let's try if this is working. So now now we want to make a little change here. So in the before transact in the before transaction, so we make a new command uh, console log. So here um, test test. Okay. So how we can test if this is working? So and for for, for this we use this second terminal here, and then we can stop this process with control C. And the only thing what we have to do is we, we have to start it again. And when we start it again, it's running, but with this new version of this chain code. And then we will try to query that. And you see here the log message test test. And in this way, you can make your modifications. And uh, you can make your modifications and then test it. And that's an easy way to try your chain code during the development. And uh, yeah, so that's an important step. Okay, so, and uh, now if this is working, so we can remove this. Test this. Now we have to implement this function here. So, and I have prepared this here. So let me copy this. And then I'm, I, I will walk through this. So, okay, so. This is the new function, get uh, commission statement by time range. And uh, here we don't, we only have one uh, parameter, one option. And uh, this is the CTX, this context, yeah, which will, which is comes through the, through, through, through the system. And uh, there we will have uh, through the stop interface, we have the possibility to get all the arguments which we have, um, which we can use here. So, this one. All these arguments here. Yeah, get args means to read this away here. Yeah. And then you have access to this, yeah. 
Okay, I say here, this is a, a short uh, quaking condition. Uh, here we have our global oil results array. And uh, the important part here is, uh, let us split this a little bit. So here, this is the part which is unique to the couch today. So we have here a query string and uh, we need a selector object. And uh, the selector, uh, you can try this also with this, uh, with this administrator tool. Uh, I can show you this a little bit later. Uh, and uh, there you have a find command. And in this find command, you have also this selectors. And uh, we need this selector and this selector has the, has the properties. And when we would like to query the revenue, so our field is called revenue TS. And then we have to make here the query and the query is that we say we want all values the greater than argument one and uh, uh, less than argument two. Uh, and we can also give them the query string a sort object, a sort property. And this sort, pro this sort property is an array. And in this array, we can uh, some object array. And in this object array, we can have different sorting uh, elements. And we want to try to sort this uh, uh, ascending or descending. And uh, so may, let us see what is the query string. So, and this is how you can compose a query string here. And a good possibility also to try this out is the test is the, the administrator interface because in this administrator interface you can uh, test these queries against the blockchain. And uh, then if this query is, is ready, then you can uh, use it here in your in your source code. And yeah, and that's the query we are going to uh, send. And uh, this is done also with this command here. So get query result is also provided through this stop uh, API. And uh, so I think most functions are provided through this CTX stop here. And it's also good to look into the documentation, which functions you can query, uh, which you can use here. And that's the reason why I've put you uh, the link to, to the documentation. And the result of this get query result is an iterator. So that's important here. So the, uh, well, that's, uh, that's important because we can loop over this uh, through this iterator. And uh, this is done here with this, with this while block here. And uh, as long as this result iterator has a next object and, is, and this is represented to this done. So the last transaction hello. in this, hello. Do you have a question? No. Um, and the last, the last um, result the last uh, line is represented through this done property here. And uh, until this uh, is uh, available, uh, we will loop through this while loop. And then the only thing is what we have to do here is to convert this back as a, um, as a string uh, in the UTF-8 uh, format from the puffer. And then we can uh, compose an output uh, as a record, as a JSON string. And if an error is an error. And then we push this in the all results array here. And we have a key. So then we see the key and we see then the record data. And yeah. And then the last step is that we can uh, give the JSON string uh, back. And that's it. So, um, and when we try this, so let us try this now. So we can stop the chain code, start the chain code again. And then we can try the command here. Ah, it works. 
and you see here the output. Yeah. So this is our console log from the query screen. Okay, so now what we have seen here is um, in the March. So let us go back one month. So to see a little bit more. Okay, so maybe we should create another. So this is. Um, so and then Okay, so now you see more results. Um, but we have here the 21, we have here the 20, and we have the 15. So this is the order. And uh, when we're going to change this here, let's say desk, stop the chain code, start the chain code again, and do the query again. Now you have the uh, other direction. So 15, 20, 21. So, okay. So, and uh, so when you don't want your log statement, you can remove it, stop it and restart it again. And then you don't have the log messages here. Okay. So, um, and now we can compare this methods here as we have seen, let us switch back to the presentation. Mm. Ah, one thing I have missed um, here. This is the index, yeah? So here you see the folder structure in this, this is our train code folder. And here we need this structure, meta inf, state db, couch db indexes. And here we have a JSON document. In this JSON document, we have here this search field uh, named. And and here we have, now we have three different possibilities to query our data. So we have this traditional version with the composite key, which is also a good choice when your system uh, doesn't need a query like this one. Or you can use this CouchDB version and uh, then you can use all the capacities that CouchDB has and then you can query uh, a lot more. And one example of this, is uh, this one here. And uh, yeah, so I think this is a, I think now I'm on my end. So I can show you only this, this, the interface, I can, I think I can show you this or not. I'm not sure if I can show you this, um, but I don't think so because this part is not enabled on the test machine. Okay, so I think I'm in. So thanks for your attention. And do you have any questions to this? Today we are a little bit shorter, I know, but uh, 
I'm happy to be here today. So we, because my time is a little bit limited. And uh, so, yeah. So is there any question to this? That's good, Conrad. Thank you for moderating the, the, the chat. Uh, the previous recordings and so on, all you can find on the, uh, all the recordings are on the official YouTube channel. And um, I post tomorrow, um, you will receive an email from the meetup uh, page. And in this meetup page, there is the link to this presentation and also to the, to the support material. And uh, on, 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 this, uh, on my website, uh, there is also then the link to the YouTube video. And uh, this will be in the official is recorded and published under the um, Hyperledger channel. And uh, I have a link there. And then you click on this link, you will uh, come to this link. And you find all the, um, all the videos uh, on this, on Hyperledger, on the Hyperledger channel. I have a question. Yep, yes, please. Uh, if you want to add uh, uh, a certificate authority uh, yeah. to this uh, setup, we should only add the uh, uh, image, Docker image, uh, and the uh, Docker Compose file, right? Um, your question is now about the Fabric Certified Authority. And also, if I want to use the, this CA to uh, uh, to issue identities, yes, and wallets, yes, yes. yes. But um, this must be done in a separate session. So, Fabric provides you and certified authority uh, free, uh, and uh, with this. A certified authority, you can create all the identities. And in the test network, you can test it without, uh, it's very easily. So when you look in the Ferrix, uh, Ferrix do documentation, uh, Ferrix, no. Ah, sorry, this is read the docs. This is sorry. Now, um, complete. Um, we find this also in the getting started. No, so no, it's not good. What are some of the favorite examples? So here, and uh, in the test network. All right, so welcome to this Hyperledger Sweden meetup. My name is Roland and I'm no. your guest for today's <laughs> session. And in today's session, we will have... Uh, Could you mute myself, please? <laughs> Thanks. Um, this is the readme, this is the network script. And here I have to look for the documentation for you. Uh, because um, you can start the Fabric CAs with a, with, a, with a single command for this in the test network. So I have to look where is the documentation for this. And then you can uh, see how this is working over here. Yeah, here. So. So this is the, the, the uh, test network. And then the test network, uh, this, we have the script network, uh, this network script. And this is, when you compare it with the 1.4 version, uh, the build your first network example, and with this uh, version, then this is really, really a game changer, I think. So only 
especially for learning, because we can, with this script, we can start any configuration. So we can start a configuration um, with the LabelDB, we can start a configuration here with CouchDB, and also you can uh, start this test network only with this uh, option CA, and then you will have um, the whole uh, crypto material generated through the, through the test network uh, through this script. And uh, this is, when you look into the network script a little bit deeper, then you will find how they do this. And, uh, the, and when you do it by hand, uh, like it was in the 1.4 the 1 version, because then it's a little bit difficult to do that. And when you to learn and test it, then it's much more difficult to create a test system because you have to create not the, the, the users only, yeah? so the admin user and the user one, for example, which interacts with the network, you have also to create the peer, the orderers, yeah? And uh, for every network uh, element in this, this fabric network, you have to create an identity. And uh, here in this network script, you find subscripts uh, where you can see how you can do this. Uh, later in the session, uh, I have planned to show you how we can do this and how we can play with the fabric CI because fabric CI is also important here. Maybe we will do it um, earlier because in the, ch the chain code has also the possibility to check the identity. And in these um, identities, we can have some special properties. So maybe uh, this is called an attribute based chain code. And in, in, in an attribute based chain code, uh, that we can say, okay, in this, set, in this certificate uh, from this user, this, is, um, this certi certificate belongs to the marketing department or to the finance department, for example. And only members of this finance department can call this chain code function, especially this revenue function. So, and that's the reason why it's important um, also to know as a chain code developer, how you can start and how you can modify these certified uh, identities, these identities. And um, yeah, so, I think we, this is a good, it's also good for, no for, for learning the chain code part because um, attribute based chain code and uh, is a topic also, also in for the certification. And uh, this is the permission system. So we have to take care on the permissions and we don't have a username and a password here to give a particular user any access rights because we have an, an RSA, authentic, authentication. And, uh, but we can use, uh, we can um, create a new identity with a, with a special uh, property, for example. So in the, case, in the way how we need this, and then our chain code can react on this property. And then we can say, if this identity has this um, property, then you can uh, access this, uh, this particular function or this chain code even. And that's the reason why we, we have also here this before section. So we can here in this before section, we can do the logging. Okay, we can get the transaction ID to log or whatever you want, okay. But we can also check on this position if the user, if this, not the user, so we don't have a user, we have an identity. So, and if this identity has the proper access rights to access this chain code or later to access this function. And that's important uh, to know how you can start a Fabrix CA, how you can create, how you can interact with this Fabrix CA uh, in terms that you can modify uh, these uh, attributes and then you can re react on the chain code directly to these uh, properties. And the simplest or the clearest example is that um, the revenue, um, maybe the re all this revenue 
uh, uh, sum a sum from this revenue could only be called uh, from the uh, bookkeeping department and not for the marketing or for a technical department, for example. And this is something what you can make with uh, the train code in the combination with this uh, certified authority. So, but this will definitely definitely uh, definitive come uh, in one of the next uh, sessions. Um, but from the chain code perspective, not so much from yes. the administrator perspective. Uh, can, uh, uh, can we use uh, a local, local version of uh, Couch TV installed locally on the hmm. test code? Okay, so so you want to use not the Docker version of CouchDB, you want to use uh, a native version. Like installed by uh, Homebrew. Installed by Homebrew. On, I'm not on sure if this, if this is working. So I haven't seen an example. I have always seen the, the examples with, uh, with CouchDB as a container, but uh, why not? So why not? So the only thing is uh, that we need, to be, because the Docker container, the only thing that the Docker container uh, does is that uh, they run the couch to be, and we have linked all the storage outside of this container. So maybe this, I think, I haven't tried it, but uh, I think it, could be possible that uh, you can also use CouchDB in a native version and not in a Docker version. Also, uh, the test network, can we start it in development mode? Um, of course, I think so, I think so. I haven't tried it, but uh, I think so, I think so. Also, the uh, can you run a native version of it, the um, binary? Yes, yes. I think and there are some examples. Um, the Fabric uh, CA has a separate documentation. And I, and I think I can remember that there was a documentation how you can run the Fabric CA natively and not with Docker container. So, but for this, you have to look to the Fabric uh, CA documentation. And uh, let me check Fabric CA. And there's a user guide. Yeah, but this is one thing. User guide, operation guide. I think I saw. But I, I'm not sure, but I think I saw a, a version which is used, uh, the, which uses the, the native, the Fabric CI server in a native version. But it's not here. No, I can try to figure it out and uh, uh, I will post this. Or you can post this question on the uh, GitHub Some Linux page here. Yes, thank and you. Then, I, will, I will post it, yes. Yes, please. So when you have here in the discussion side, then I have a little bit of time to, to think about that and then I can uh, look if there is a an, solution for that. Okay. Thank you very much. Welcome. Any other question? Yeah, if not, Query is still writing to the blockchain, isn't it? Um, query isn't writing. Query is querying, not writing. So, and uh, the blockchain, hmm. the question is, what is the blockchain? 
and uh, the blockchain is uh, somebody asked how we can query the history of an asset. Yes, you can do this. Um, and the history of an asset means all the transactions of an asset. And uh, the query goes, all, goes always to the world state here. Yeah. So, and uh, the query, when you use the, the query command uh, from the CLI or from the, from the uh, Node.js SDK, uh, then it will query only the peer and the local, the local state database, which is installed on that particular peer, which you are connected. Here in this test scenario, we have only uh, one peer. So, but we can use this uh, in, the, in the session on the, in the last meetup. I have shown you how you can install this uh, this uh, chain code also on the test on the official test network, and then uh, you can try to connect to. When you try to connect to this network, you have to set the proper environment variables. So we have seen the script um, set globals yeah, with one, two, and three, and uh, with this you set the proper environment variables so that the local peer command. Uh, uh, knows uh, to which peer you, uh, you want to connect. And then this state database is used to query the ledger. And there is nothing written. So there is only a read process to this world state. And it doesn't matter if this level it be or couch to be. So, and to the blockchain query is still writing to the blockchain, yeah. The blockchain, I don't think so. So the right term must be to the world state yeah? because the blockchain here is uh, something called the ledger and uh, the world state represents the, the last st status of an asset. But it's a little bit difficult with the term. So we have to be careful with the, with the, with the terms. Okay, any other question? If not, then thank you for your attention. And uh, yeah, have a nice weekend, evening, morning or whatever. And uh, we will see you next time.